Hey everyone, this is the next video in the series about EH Cache integration with the Spring Boot. So, in the EH Cache series, it's a third third video. In the demo, it's a second video. Okay. In the first video, we have covered about how you can integrate EH Cache with the Spring Boot. All right. Want to watch other videos? If you want to watch other videos, links are given in the description box. Right. As promised, let's go ahead and dig deeper into the EH Cache integration with the Spring Boot. So this is our Spring Boot application that we have created and I also have shown you how you can fetch the data from the database and how you can cache it. Okay. And further, if you want to update and delete the data, you can, I already have written the code for that. You can go ahead and do that. So the annotations for that was uh, whether you are updating or deleting the book. book. So I already, I have shown you the demo about get I have shown you the demo about the get book cache put is there which will take care when you updating the book in the cache cache with is there to delete the books from the cache when you're when you are actually deleting the things from the database right so this is the configuration for our cache which is actually integrating the which is actually integrating the es cache and using this in spring boot okay so this is the beam that it is creating so let's go ahead and see what is going on inside this so if i go ahead here it is taking the cache manager cache manager instance and it is setting uh, that uh, and creating the es cache manager for that right so we need for caching we need one cache manager so what cache manager is that in this case it is es cache in usual cases, it can be Redis cache, Hazel cost cache. So whatever libraries you, you have in your application, it depends on that. So for our case, it is each cache manager, right? So this is expecting this cache manager and same we are create, creating here. Each cache manager is being created here. So let's see what is this. It is taking care of the factory bean and this factory bean is coming from the spring contact support so it is very important to understand from where these classes are coming when you added spring boot starter cache so it downloaded contact support so cache manager factory bean is there so is using this cache manager factory bean you can create the bean for eh cache manager or redis cache manager manager or any other okay so here we are creating eh cache so it had set the configuration location for the eh cache set config location so let's see what it is doing with this configuration that we are giving it it had set the configuration location and it is a resource so let's see this config location is here so see how many places it is being used right so yeah search for the usage of this it is setting all these locations right so configuration yeah this is the after set config locations we have seen and es cache manage factory we need here after properties properties it is parsing the configuration right so it is parsing the configuration so es cache dot xml is mandatory for that all right so if you go here and see this uh, it is parsing this configuration right so let's go ahead and see this what it is doing config and this parse configuration okay so all these stuffs it is doing and also if, if you come back here see config location is not equal to null it is going to do this and if config location is null if you have not given this uh, for now you have given your eh cache dot xml right here on your class path in case you have not given this what happens then it has taken care of that this dot config location is null then it is going to take care of that so it is not going to take the location that you have given but by default it had some config location right so that it is going to take care right so what is that let me show you standard class loader and get resource default class path configuration file it is going to take care of the es cache stuff. it is already if you have not mentioned the name it is already going to take care of this it is going to look for that and if this is not found it is going to take care of that this es cache fails dot xml where is this let me show you that configuration factory and this is the es cache we are looking into the es cache library right 
So if you come down, it has escase.fail.safe.xml. So if you have not provided the escase.xml, by default, it is going to configure the things by default that they have. So they have disk store, temp directory, and other configuration also. If in your escase.xml you want to configure something you can get the information right from here right so all this information is coming here so escase.xml we have given some configuration which was the default right this configuration we have used in our escase.xml right? see this is the same local temp swap and this all this information right so this is coming from the escase failsafe.xml right so you see how it is configuring how it is taking your escache.xml and configuring that and parsing those informations right and then it is returning that okay so now eh cache manager the cache manager that is cache manager instance that is in your application now has instance of eh cache manager how this is how it has taken the eh cache and the policies and configuration that you have given your eh cache xml it is honoring that right so more customization i wanted to show you so last time i showed you i have just made some changes so earlier it was path temp directory i have given it user directory so you want to know the more information about customization you can just read out this one this is very much self-explanatory right so i have just shown you where to refer right so you can get a lot from here right so if i mention here user dot directory so when earlier it was temp directory it was creating the uh, disk stores that we were getting the data from the database it was storing all the information into that temp directory so if i mention this user directory let's see where it is uh, storing so user.dir means the current working directory where your application is running it is going to create all the informations right here right so let's go ahead and start the application and see this what information it is creating right so this is the name of the cache start the application so it will create the cache file and log file right here earlier it was created in the temp directory so wait for the application to start so application is started okay so let me clear this console okay and refresh this place synchronous okay so it has created the two files es cache disk store.log and books.data so books.data it has created for me and if you want to do anything with this if you try to delete this it is not going to allow you to delete this because that it has taken the log on this file where it is going to store all the information that we are trying to get so go ahead and hit the So next I am going ahead and refreshing this endpoint that we were using to get the data from database. Right? So it is going to store this information on the disk. So if I open this again, it has some information now, right? And if I come to here, it has fetched the book from the database, right? So if I clear this again and hit this again, now it is not going to hit the db again it is going to get the information from the database it is going to hit it is now getting the information from the cache right but the problem here is this books.data is here and if i restart this application it is going to clear this right why is this so because in our escache.xml we have used the persistence strategy persistence st strategy is taking care of this if you have local temp swap so it is going to create it is going to persist the persist the data in your disk but it is whenever you starting restarting the, your application it is going to clear that data so it is of no use when you your application is up again okay because all the store all the cache is in in memory and when you are restarting it is going to delete this information right so whatever inside this okay let's see this in action i am going to restart this application and show you how it is going to clear this information right so books.data we have something but when restarted your application it is going to recreate this data recreate this file okay 
ओके एप्लीकेशन इज स्टार्टेड क्लियर कंसोल एंड वॉट टू डू जस्ट रेफरेंस दिस या Refresh this and the data is lost right here. Okay, so this is the thing that I want. And if you hit the endpoint again, it will again hit the database. So what is the point of disk persistence? This is the important point to understand here. So let's see how it is uh, taking care of that. Right. So just mention it here. Some random strategy. Mention it some random strategy here. So you will get the actual location in the error log. where it is uh, this as strategy is right so let me show you uh, why i am doing this as of now i do not know how many strategies are there so i just want to get information of that so this is the way how i am going to get the information yes as expected it threw an exception and what is the exception could not uh, set attribute strategy right because it is not allowed here right and how i can get those information right so yeah this is the place right this is the file that i am looking for right so it has uh, all these informations right so persistent configuration so copy this and control n and look for this class file right so if i persistent configuration here so it has different configurations right so just read it out it has strategy here local temp swap standard and open source if you remember from the first video where we, we were covering the theory about the eh cache it had some open source feature and it had some paid enterprise features so local temp swap that we were using so far it is coming under the standard open source that is why it is working and other strategies what are there local restartable and non and distributed other than any uh, anything else you pass it is going to throw an exception right so local restartable enterprise fault tolerant persistence what is the meaning of this when you are using this persistent strategy when your data is written once in in your this file cache informations when you restart your application it is not going to clear that it is going to persist that into one and when you restart that it is it is first going to look into that data disk data that you have if it is not found there only it is going to fetch uh, that from the database so it is going to save you from the network latency and from hitting the database right and none so let's see if it is working actually it is the enterprise fault tolerance so you have to have the paid feature of the es cache this is the cache here right if you are not using the paid feature of the es cache you are not able to use this so just try to use this if you es cache now replace this be by using this i can get all the uh, i you show sure? you see here how, why i give a, why i gave the incorrect information right here so to get the correct informations right so i now when i start this i will get the correct error why it is not supported so now you know how many strategies are there and that are supported by the eh cache but from that none distributed you can do but it is coming from the terra cota cluster so you need also need to have the clustered informations and configurations right yeah again it threw an exception but now cache exception cache books cannot be configured because the enterprise feature manager could not be found enterprise features manager could not be found you must use an enterprise version of es cache to successfully enable enterprise persistence right so if you are paying for, if you are working in a company where you have license and uh, license and paid version of the es cache you can play around with this unfortunately i do not have this at home that is why i am not able to show you that but i'm sure it will work in that way right so i hope you got the informations and any any customization that you want to do this way you can do policy time to uh, time to idle and other information right so this is the thing that i wanted to show how configuration is happening and all those things right so this is our build.gradle which is the best place to go this is the dependency for the eh cache right so i hope uh, this lesson this eh cache was helpful uh, helpful 
for you and you learned something from my end this series yes cache integration with spring boot is complete if you have any issue put that in comment section i'll cover in the next videos okay next i'm going to pick the redis redis cache all right and we will see what is redis we will configure set up that and then we will see the cache information guys if you like the content please don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends it highly and really motivates me to uh, make more and more videos right so i'll see you in the next video take care bye, -bye.